Hello everyone, you're welcome back to my channel. My name is Inka. In today's tutorial, we're going to be making this cute and beautiful dress, but we're going to be making some modifications to it because it's a short dress and I don't think I want a short dress, so I'm going to be making mine into a long dress. Okay, and for the wings that are, that is attached to the sides, uh, I don't think I want that also. I'm going to make mine to be exactly like this, as you can see in my own recreation okay that's just a few modifications we are going to be making to the dress so for I'm this going... tutorial today i'm using three yards of dochet satin this is a dochet satin very silky and beautiful you can use uh, chiffon for this style you can use dochet satin you can even use satin if you want to wear satin you can use crepe you can use silk you can use any fabric that drapes easily. In fact, you can use lace. You can also use Ankara if you want. Just that Ankara will not fall too much, but it will have structure and it's going to be very fine too. It has its own different look. So, yeah, basically. So, for this tutorial today, I'm using three yards, like I said, and my machine thread, my machine zipper. And for the uh, design that I placed on mine. I use this uh, ring. It is sold in the market. This is just 100 Naira. Goes for 100 Naira. Yes. Okay, you see, it's sold in the market. Okay. So, we are going to be using this. If you are recreating it exactly like the image sent to me, you don't need this. This is optional for you. And it's just to attach some fabric by the two sides and then you tie it. It's as simple as that, but I'm going to be recreating mine like this, like I said. All right, so if you're new to this channel, please kindly take a moment to subscribe if you have not subscribed. And to my old subscriber, you're all welcome back. I love you. Thank you for always coming back. All right, so let's get into today's tutorial. For this tutorial today, here are the basic measurements you're going to be needing. You need your shoulder to one inch below your under bust. So just measure to where your bra stop and then one inch after that, okay? It's not up to your waist length okay so you need that measurement so in my own case that's going to be 15 inches then you need the circumference of that position okay so that is 33 inches for me then you need your gown length the length you want for the gown so my total gown length is 60 inches then you need your hip circumference measurement you need your center back to where you want the sleeve to stop i'm going to be making mine to be 22 inches so i'm going to be cutting the upper part first and i'm going to be folding my fabric into four so my fabric is folded into two and then after that i'll fold it downward into four brick is folded into four from the side, you don't really need the front to be on fold because it's open. It's more like what I've got on here. I'll roll my guideline to have a starting point. From the folded edge here, I'm going to measure one inch and I'm going to roll it. So that's going to serve as the zip allowance at the back and also for folding the raw edge of the front because the front is going to be slitted. So. So all my measurement is going to start from this line that I rule now towards here. So the first thing is for you to measure the length. The length I'm using for this place is 15 inches. So I'm going to measure the 15 inches downward with half inch for my seam allowance. Then I'm going to rule it. On the guideline, measure your center back to your desired sleeve length. Uh, I'm using 22 inches for mine, which is here. And I'm going to be adding one inch allowance to it because we are going to be folding the edge of the sleeve. Okay. Then you just really straight down. This tie is just a straight rectangle like this. Okay. So the next thing now is just to put the neckline. So you start from this line that we that we rule. We're we'll using three and a half for the neck width. So from this line, I'll measure three and a half. The neck depth is going to be 
two inches for the back so I'll connect it together can you see like zip like this then the front neckline to be eight inches then I'm going to connect it this way like a V neckline can you see so this is the back neckline and this is the front neckline okay before we cut this out we need to slant the shoulder also the shoulder so from this line you measure three inches inward three inches then you come to the shoulder here you measure one and a half downward you're going to connect to this neck point then after that you had half inch upward for the shoulder seam allowance we are done shocking so the next is just for us to cut this out and from the front you need to blend it very well here this way So first you cut on the back neckline. So the one underneath is going to be the back. So the one on top is the front. So you take it out. So for the back, you know, it's on forge. So you need to slit it. So on the waistline here, you're going to go in by one inch go in by one inch and then you're going to slant it to this neck point like this so I'm going to cut this off so this is just for a better fit so this 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 last two now is the back so we are done with the back so you can remove it then for the front you need to cut the front neckline so it's on fold we don't need it to be on fold so you slit it you cut off the neckline so if you open it it's going to be like this can you see here is the back so we're going to be cutting the down part of our dress first you fold your fabric into two like this then after that you fold it over like this into four so you fold it into four you leave some space here for your zip allowance this part here is on fold this is your center front okay make sure one inch downward one inch I'll roll it the folded edge here i'll make sure one inch towards the side this way okay then i'll rule it all the way down so this is my zip allowance so i can just decide to cut off this excess so this place is my zip allowance and it's one inch over here is on fold and this is my center front okay so if remember from my shoulder to where i want the drape to start from was 15 inches so i'll put that 15 inches on this line put the 15 inches on this line then you measure down your hip line then the remaining length of your gown my total gown length is 60 inches so i'll measure the 60 inches with my same allowance i'm using two inches for my I mean allowance over there so I will extend the lines hip line and then this is the length of my gown with my same allowance the standard hip line is 24 inches but you can measure yourself so that you know where your hip line is the fullest part of the boat that is the hip line so you can measure yourself for more accuracy the next thing you have to do now at this point you input the circumference of that measurement that we took earlier mine is 33 inches so 33 divided by 4 that will be 8.25 so i'll measure 8.25 here 8.25 and i'm going to be inputting that so i'll measure one inch for the dart intake then 
my seam allowance i'm using one inch for my seam allowance okay then you come to the hip line you input the hip circumference measurement my hip circumference is 42 divided by 4 that will be 10.5 i'll measure the 10.5 then i'll add my seam allowance of one inch then whatever i have here because i'm going to be penciling it down Whatever I have here on the hip line, I'm going to subtract 2 inches from it and put it at the hemline. So the total thing I have here is 11.5. 11 if I subtract 2, that will be 9.5. So I'll put 9.5 here. Because I want it to be pencil. Okay, then we we'll connect all the points together. For the front, you come up by 1 inch. We already have 1 inch here. And then you are going to just cuff it to the side seam. Just blend it like this to the side seam. Then for the back, you can just slightly lift this up so that you can rule. You can see this one inch below the starting point so that you can rule that line at the back. It's very important. I will show you what to do with it later. So for a better fit at the back, you can contour the back on the waistline. From the zip allowance go in by half inch and then connect it to the hip line then you also put your knee measurements at the back so that you can also go in at that point by half inch just to make it to sit well at the back then I'll go ahead, I'm going to cut this out, it is ready. Next thing is to note your dart position. So from the folded edge here, you measure your nipple to nipple distance divided by 2. My nipple to nipple distance is 8 inches divided by 2, that will be 4. So that's going to be my dart position. The front dart for this is going to be 6 inches because we start at the underbust. More like at the underbust. Instead of the regular 4 inches, you're going to make it to be 6 inches for the front. And the back is going to be 8 inches below this point. And then you take half inch dart on both sides of the line. Okay, so this is the for the front that but for the back that is going to be eight inches. So when you are sewing the back, you will know that it's going to be eight inches from the waistline. Just measure eight inches. So you transfer your that to the other side. Front is basically ready, so you can take off the front. Okay. This is how the front is looking. Can you see? So this is the back. The first step is to cut off this contour line that we have at the back this is just to make it to fit nicely at the back okay so this extra one inch below here that we have at the back just cut it off you don't need it the back is also ready don't forget to measure from here now measure one inch and notch it for your zip allowance we already notch one inch from here is one inch so from that one inch notching you measure your nipple to nipple distance divided by two my nipple to nipple is 8 inches divided by 2 that is 4 you mark it you measure 8 inches downward 8 inches and because we already enter by half inch on on the at the zip allowance part when we we're cutting it so meaning our dart is remaining half inch so you take 0 0.25 inch for your dart and 0 0.25 on both sides of the line for your dart And then you're just going to connect it this way. 
sure that that is not up to half half inch again so this is the width if you open the back can you see you can see the contour we did here you can see this one also so from the beginning here i'll measure 10 inches downward i'll note that point and then from that 10 inches i'm going to close it with one inch all the way to where i want my slit to start from the hemline i'll be using 23 inches for my slit length so this is 23 inches so i'm going to close with one inch all the way to this point one inch you just follow the curve as it appears and you close with one inch just follow the curve as it appears like this all the way to this point okay So I've joined it. So the next thing is for you to open it this way. So you are going to aim the slit. You fold half inch inward this way. Can you see? At the other side, you also fold half inch inward. Like this, can you see? Then you take it to your sewing machine and you run your stitch all the way down. If you don't want it to show any seam line, you can tuck in hemming gum and just high on it in place. Okay, to so use just know that hemming gum over time it used to wear off, so I always suggest for you to stitch it or you do an hemming stitch there. Then from the good side, you can see the way it's looking. I'm going to be making a stitch at the edge of this then after that you hem the bottom part with the number of allowance that you added okay just hem the bottom part like this so the next thing i'm going to do is just to sew in my darts just like we said, you sew in your darts. Keep the back aside, the back is ready. Then I'll work on the front. So this is the front. The first thing is to sew in my darts and you also replicate this, this dart to this side also. The front skirt is also ready. Don't forget to iron your dart. So I'm going to be cutting the drip on the waistline. So my fabric is folded into two this way. Then I'll measure 24 inches. I'll measure 24 inches from here. Downward is 24 inches. I'll make a mark. Then from here downward also, I'll mark 24 inches. Then I'll connect these points together. Can you see? Cut it out. Then I'm going to slit here. Alright, so the next thing you have to do now is to take this to the sewing machine now. This side and this side, they are going to be aiming this side. Just fold and make a stitch all the way down. Do the same thing to the second side and you repeat the same thing to the second one also. So I've aimed here and also here. So the next thing I'm going to do now is just to insert this ring this way can you see? just place the ring like this and you drag it a little bit and you fold you fold it like about two inches inward and you take it back to your sewing machine and you tag it down can you see at the second side of the ring you also insert this one inside this way drag it out like about two inches again and then 
you also tag it down. So from the wrong side, this is how it's looking. So you take to the sewing machine, you just tack here down. You also do the same thing to this side. The ring is at the center on my hip line. You can see the shock of my hip line is still showing. Start making your pleats from your hip line like this, the way I'm showing you here. Just create your pleats. Can you see? Create your pleat like this. Going to stop one inch below the starting point. Then you pin it. Then you cut off the excess when you are done stitching it down. is it from the wrong side so you stick to the sewing machine you stitch them together so this is ready so the next so this is the upper part of the front the first step is for you to use bias and finish this neck area use bias and finish the neck area then you repeat the same thing to the back you use bias and finish the neck area for the back also so place your bias to the right side of the neckline and you stitch to the neckline and when you are done you turn the bias to the wrong side and top stitch so this is the back you put the bias to the right side of the back neckline also and stitch around Then when you're done, you turn the bias to the wrong side and top stitch. Then you repeat the same thing to the second side of the back. So I'm done aiming the neckline with my bias. Can you see? At the, the waistline. Overlap them by one inch like this. And then take to your sewing machine and just mash them together. So I've done that. The next thing is for you to run a gather stitch starting, starting from the beginning here, run a gather stitch all the way to the other end. And then you pull your gather to the circumference of, of the front skirt, okay? You also do the same thing to the back. This is the upper part of the back. So you are going to pull your gather to the circumference of the waistline like this. So you take to the sewing machine, turn your machine down to the longest stitch and then so run a gather stitch across and the longest stitch on my sewing machine. So you put Don't forget at this side you have your one inch zip allowance so make sure that side is flat like this. Then at the other side also you are going to have one inch same allowance also so ensure that side is also flat then you pull the gather to the circumference of the waistline okay you do the same thing to the second one so after pulling your gather to the waist circumference you're going to place them on top of each other right side facing each other then you take it to your sewing machine and you're going to stitch the waistline together with half inch same allowance you repeat the same thing to the second side can you see you match them together right side to right side and you are going to stitch together with half inch same allowance on the waistline The next thing I'm going to do now is to fix the zipper to the center back. So this is the front. The next thing we have to do now is to place front and back together, right side to right side. I'm going to join the shoulders together with half inch seam allowance. 
on both sides. So the next thing I'm going to do now is to close the side from this joining here you come up by one inch and then you start closing from there with the allowance that you had it I added one inch seam allowance so I'm going to close the side with one inch seam allowance all the way down and I'll do the same thing to the second side if you don't want it to open your armpit too much like this you can still come up more than now one inch from the joining all right and yeah after closing the side that will be the end of the tutorial. Mm -hmm. I've closed the side. You can see I also weave all the raw edges. I've weave all the raw edges, okay? So the next thing now is just to aim the sleeve round. So just fold it inside and then you stitch all around the sleeve opening starting from the underarm here all the way back to the second underarm turn it to the good side so that it can be easy for you if you turn it to the good side you'll be able to assess it easily so fold quarter inch in and then you fold it over again and make your stitches That will be the end of the tutorial for today. If you have not subscribed to my channel yet, please kindly subscribe. And don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.